It's been a wild week, though, for the markets, with the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank unleashing chaos across the globe and panic rippling through the financial sector. Here to discuss the banking turmoil is Lizanne Saunders, Charles Schwab Chief Investment Strategist. Lizanne, thanks so much for joining us. So what's your sure. reaction to what we saw in the banking sector this week? So this is more of a liquidity issue than it is a credit issue. And I think that's an important distinction we need to make relative to 2008 because there's been a lot of of conflating. And there's been a lot of conflating across the spectrum of how this has been reported, including the conflating of FDIC and and CIPIC. So um, we're we're in this social media era where information flow happens unbelievably quickly. Uh, Social media can fuel a bank run and everybody's scrambling to try to get the the accurate story. But what we also saw was the Fed stepping in really, really quickly. And that's another important distinction relative to 2008 in a good way. And when you looked at the the take up in terms of uh, of loans from the Fed that came out yesterday at, at almost three hundred and twenty billion dollars, that suggests that um, uh, the, the programs are working. Um, that's not necessarily a, uh, a, a sort of a you know shiny penny story because it means that there are um, liquidity and funding issues. But I also think that this is part and parcel of a broader issue of the end of the era of easy money and the implications that that has, not just for the banking industry, but for, for startups, for less well-capitalized companies. You're seeing it in layoff announcements, companies that might have to access credit again. And I I think this story is just starting to unfold, but clearly the concentration this week has been on the banking side of things. Yeah, and and Lizanne, just quickly sticking with the banking side of it, I think there also is just some of that risk out there, some of that worry, I should say, about the contagion, what that could look like if more banks could fail. Do you think we could see some as a result of the shift that we're seeing just in terms of the money, the liquidity, and that picture that still is true today? I think the contagion seems to be a bit more on the psychological front than something systemic like during the global financial uh, crisis. And and that certainly can feed on itself, but it's also where regulatory bodies and Federal Reserve as in part a regulatory body can step in and hopefully try to uh, calm nerves. I think what's adding to the, the grave uncertainty right now is not just contagion in the banking system, but what's the Fed going to do on Wednesday and, and talk about a you know complicated sort of wrinkle getting thrown into this in advance of uh, the, the Wednesday finale of the, the Fed meeting. And so expectations around what the Fed is going to do, terminal rate, when rate cuts would kick in, have been all over the place this year. And that, I think, has been additionally unsettling for markets. So, Lizanne, what do you think the Fed will do on Wednesday? <laughs> I don't know. I think a lot depends on what we see within the banking system. We're not going to get any additional concrete economic information, either broadly on the economy or inflation. So I think it 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 comes down to whether things settle down or whether um, things start to uh, to escalate again over the weekend or into the beginning of the week. So I think that's where the needle will move. It, somewhat clearly, it's between doing nothing and 25 basis points. I think 50 is off the table. There's some expecting cuts. I don't think the Fed will do that. But I think where that needle moves is a, is a function of what happens in the banking situation. And five days these days is a lot of time. It certainly is a lot of times. Five days can really change the entire picture. Lizanne, if we do get a raise, How do you think the equity markets react? What do you think that tells us just about the risk that could potentially still be out there? To some degree, I think it depends on what Fed Fund Futures suggest is priced into expectations going into the meeting. It's not so much what the Fed does that tends to cause market volatility day of. It's if they do something that sort of goes against what was built into market expectations at that point. So I think if a hike gets priced in uh, by the futures curve and then the Fed you know, comes along with 25, I, my guess is it would be a pretty dovish hike in that they would address um, uh, concerns in the banking system. If they don't do anything, then it's a question of how they address how they're going to tackle inflation in the event there continues to be stress in the banking system. So. Um, I wouldn't want to be uh, a Fed member right now, I'd say that. <laughs> yeah, certainly an extremely, always a tough job, but in these situations, even tougher. Yeah. Lizanne, what does all this tell us just about the risk of a recession? Is that a sure thing at this point? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, we were already in a form of recession. I've talked about this on, mm -hmm. on on your program, this rolling recession. We have had this asset crunch and it's hit areas like uh, the mortgage market and housing and housing more broadly and consumer goods, a lot of the stay at home beneficiaries. It just has been offset by strength in services. Do I think ultimately we we get an officially declared recession by the NBER? Yes, I think that's the case. We were in a bit of a, a tightening credit environment before SVB failed. So I think what was an asset crunch is likely to turn into a credit crunch. And that was sort of the missing ingredient. And really the thing that a lot of the pundits that were in the no recession camp were pointing to, hey, there's no credit crunch. That means no recession. Um, harder to make that case at this point. So I think recession, yes. All right, Lizanne, we'll leave it there. Always great to have you. Thanks so much for hopping on with us. We really appreciate it. Have a good weekend.